visit astlessons.com for lyrics and chords, sheet music, tablatures, useful links, and much more. Hi, so this is Robert from AST Lessons. Today I'm going to show you how to play Hey Ya with Obadiah Parker, which is originally an outcast song. The key is E major with the capo on the 4th fret, C major without, and the average tempo is about 76 BPM. This tutorial is for the live version you can find on his YouTube channel. I chose this version since it's more stripped and in my opinion sounds better when playing alone. Now some parts will be more advanced, but I will also show you how to make these parts easier. So let's begin, but don't forget to check the description for clickable timestamps, free papers, links, etc. So that was an example of how the verses and choruses can sound like when alternating between patterns I will explain later on. Since all the parts except the stick is played the same way and using the same patterns, I don't feel the need to demonstrate all the parts. But I will of course show you everything he does and then you can go to the website and print the whole song on paper. Alright, let's start with the chords. We only have four of them, and they keep repeating in the same order. They also have one thing in common, which is index finger, first fret B string, and little finger, third fret E string. So, starting with the variation of C. Then we have an F hat 2. After that, a G at 4. And last, a variation of A minor 7. When he plays it, he always muffles the E string with his thumb, like this. And on the F add 2, he also muffles the A string by bending it even further. Now if you're like me, and have trouble stretching that far, you can also just try to avoid hitting it. And since the A is in the chord already, it will sound okay if you happen to hit it. And now on to the strumming. He mostly uses number 1, then 2 and 3, and sometimes he also alternates with number 4 and 5. On the C, you play one round of patterns, and on the F add 2 and A minor 7, you play two rounds. And then on the G add 4, which is half the length of C, you play the first half of a pattern, which means two variations. 
One thing to note is that the first down strum often is shorter, many times even only hitting the bass note. Ok, so I'm now going to demonstrate them, one by one, first fast and then slow. Number one. And slowly. Number two. And slowly. Number three. And slowly. Number four. And slowly. Number five. And slowly. In the demonstrations, you can always see which pattern I'm using by looking either here or here. Now for the slow demonstration, I'm going to use the LC plus paper, which looks like this. Here I write the numbers, telling you how many beats you count on each of the chords. To make it as easy as possible, I decided to count twice as fast, which means that the full round of patterns is the same as four beats. And there is also two additions he does which is both hammer-ons using the middle finger. The first one on the F at 2, he plays quite a lot. And slowly. It's always done on the same beat, though he doesn't always continue with the same pattern after. And the other one on the A minor 7, he only plays once in the second chorus. And slowly. One thing I want to clear up is that the chords are pretty crowded in the choruses, so they don't align with the lyrics as they should. However, the timing is really easy, since you always hit one chord on A, the next on Ya, A, Ya, and so on. Alright, so I'm now going to give you three levels of difficulty. The easy way to play the stick will be to just keep playing the same patterns as before. Since it's the same chords with the same length, it will still sound okay. So to be clear, the rest of the tutorial will be on how to play the stick in a gradually more complex way. Okay, let's start with explaining the muffle technique which is a kind of because of strumming. There are lots of ways to position the hand and the fingers, but the basic idea is to get as little tone as possible and just get this percussive sound. The way I do it is to use three fingers. So the little finger mainly covers the two bottom strings, middle finger the E string, and the ring finger the rest. It's kind of a safe way, because if I accidentally miss one finger, one of the others might save me. Now for the intermediate version, you repeat this pattern four times. 
So the right hand just keeps playing down up, while the left hand does most of the work. You always start the bar by holding the chord on the first two beats, and you always end it with an open strum, which gives you time to prepare for the next chord. Then everything in between is muffled. Okay, so in the advanced version you play slightly different. On the first half you play like the intermediate version, but with two details. The first one is to skip the first up strum of the first round. And the second detail is to slightly accentuate the real off beats, which is these. In simple terms it's the second and fourth down strum of each bar. And the accentuation is done by making these drums longer and or harder. And then for the third round we have a few more changes. So what's different is firstly that you add muting on the C instead of muffling like this. And then for the second half of A minor 7 you skip the up strum here and then muffle only the last three down drums. For this bar, you might be better off just muffling with the ring finger while still holding the A minor 7 with the other 3. And also, there is no accentuation on this last bar. Then on the 4th round, it's just minor variations on the 1st and last bars. On the C, you skip the 1st up strum again. And on the 2nd round of the A minor 7, you only muffle the 2nd down strum. So that's all for today. I hope I was clear enough in my explanations and demonstrations. But if you have any questions or requests for extra material, just leave a comment below.